Get away from him, Phelps. This is my case. Shut your fucking mouth. Since when does a bag man work a case? I knew this creep wasn't on the morphine heist. Victim of his own product. Hey, detective! Can we back it off a notch? This is getting out of hand. It's a time to talk and a time to shut up. Now is the time to be quiet, son. Courtney Sheldon was a corpsman, Roy. He served his He was country. a better man than you'll ever know. You say one more word about him and I will blow your fucking head off! You finally lost it, partner. I have a pretty good idea why Sheldon is dead. And I know about Monroe. Your vast, corrupt future is draining away as we speak. <laughs> I got better things to do than argue the rub with you. Here's your new desk, kid. You're on traffic. The hot sheet is posted here, next to the map. What's his problem? That's Biggs. He's an institution. So this is what all the fuss is about. Why couldn't they build a freeway that goes past my place? They haven't even approved the money yet, kid. The bond issue won't be till December. It'll be years before any of this will happen. Here's your new partner, Stefan Burkowski. I've heard all about you, Phelps. You go easy on me and let me earn the odd citation, and maybe we'll get along fine. I'm here to learn, detective. Oh, he's an intense one, isn't he, Mel? Intense. The newly minted detective here, Cole Phelps. Hi, Phelps. I'll be keeping an eye on you. I could spend a little time basking in reflected glory, make a change from busting hookers and dope fiends. Who was that, Commander? Roy Earl, chief detective and advice. Do they all dress like movie stars? Well, Roy is a movie star. And the whole of the seedy side of L.A. is his audience. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Stick with me, kid. You'll find out. Phelps and Bukowski, LAPD. We are investigating the attempted murder of June Ballard and Jessica Hamilton. Oh, Christ! Uh, I'm Marlon Hopgood. How can I help? You hold castings here? How'd you hear about that? I got a little soundstage out back. Lead the way. Keep him here, Stefan. I'm gonna take a look around. What's this got to do with me? Don't try my patience, knucklehead. It's all for now, Hopgood. We're taking you in. Phelps! Roy Earl, advice. Hold on a moment. This is clearly a vice case. You've been roughing up my informant? Hopgood is a vice informer? Yes, he is, Phelps, and a very important one. Look at that mug. Have you been upsetting these two officers, Marlon? So we just drop it? You do if you know what's good for you. You need to catch the movie producer before an angry husband does, from what I'm hearing. I'll be making a full report to the captain, detective. You do that, kid. We're all very impressed with you. Let it slide, Cole. Let's get out of here. Detectives! Johnny Goldberg, you work for Mickey C. That's right, detectives. You wouldn't happen to know the guys who roughed up Mrs. Bishop earlier today by any chance. No, no, not us. We don't do that kind of thing. It's the husband we'd like to talk to. This is a police matter. You don't want to be taken in for obstruction of justice, do you boys? You could try the obstruction rap, but uh, it won't stick. We could beat that. You've had your 10 cents worth, gentlemen. Bishop knows how the world works. Mrs. McAfee hits him up for a movie part, happens every day. But Bishop takes it a step too far and tries to rub out Mrs. McAfee. Naturally, Guy is gonna get upset. What made you think Bishop would be here? We figure he might be planning a little accident for Hopgood, too. Those two guys have got some unfinished business. You let us know if you find Bishop. Guy McAfee can be a very generous man. I'm only gonna warn you once, gentlemen. Stay out of this. This is a police matter. We will be bringing Mark Bishop into custody. <laughs> At least he's polite. Kind of dumb, but polite. But I'm a lot less polite, you smug son of a bitch. So let me put it in ruder terms that even a pair of blockheads like you might understand. The only reason that you don't have bars on your windows already is because you're small fry. And we don't waste our time on small fry. 
You stay away from Bishop, and you stay away from me. Is that clear enough for you, asshole? Now run along back to your boss so we can pat you on the head and tell you what good boys you are. Now this is what I call a result. Mark Bishop, erstwhile film producer, an all-around piece of shit, catches a fast ticket to Quentin for statch rape and attempted murder. So he gets to spend the next 15 years playing sissy instead of sticking it to little girls. That is justice with a capital J, Detective Phelps. You've developed such a reputation, I'm not going to be able to hold on to you any longer. You're getting promoted. Go on, get your new assignment. It was good working with you, son. Phelps, Bukowski, this your work? Can I help you, detective? Sorry, Cap, didn't see you there. Yeah, I'll bet you didn't. This is a traffic case. You need something? I'm here to buy a drink for the two LAPD traffic cops who broke the back of Guy McAfee's private army. You don't have a problem with that, do you, Captain? Go right ahead. Get in. I'm buying. You'll like this place. A lot of movie people hang out here. You like jazz, Cole? The hopheads love it. Sure, I guess. Big bands and swing, I can understand, but this bebop palaver? How are you supposed to dance to that? This is Phelps, Leroy. Be nice to him. You'll like this place. They treat you right. Would you like a table, Roy? What do you think we want to do? Stand at the bar like I'll chumps? I'll get a table ready for you then. Don't look so happy to see me, Alphonse. I might get the wrong impression. Cole, this is Alphonse. He's a French Negro from Africa. Can you beat that? The Congo. A pleasure to meet you, Alphonse. Is Elsa singing tonight? Yes, she is. She has the next set. Come on, Cole. You can meet Elsa while they're fixing us a table. You'll like her. She's something else. Maybe another night, Roy. She's pretty beat up about it. Get your hands off me. Don't ever tell me what to do or what not to do, Alphonse. You got a nice club here. Don't spoil it. If you will follow me, detectives. Just through the door. It was my only real friend, Harlan. We went through it all. Do you realize what he meant to me? Of course I do. You have no idea. You said it was construction work. It was an industrial accident, Elsa. How can I be held responsible? Elsa, are you going on? Louis, for God's sake, he was my best friend. The only man who ever loved me without putting his hands on me. Hi, Elsa. Here's someone I'd like you to meet. Cole Phelps, war hero and crime fighter extraordinaire. And why would I want to meet another fascist from the LAPD? Sorry about this, Cole. What an evening I'm having. First a Negro puts his hands on me, and then this. Who do you think you're talking to, you German junkie whore? Don't you ever forget your place with me again. Do you hear me? Evening, Doc. How's business? Sanguine. Louis, help me here. I'm gonna have to give her something before her performance. Blow it off, Cole. These artsy-fartsy types always get a little flighty. Meet Dr. Harlan Fontaine, doctor to the stars. Mr. Fix-It to the mental wreckage of Hollywood. So what about that drink, boys? Phelps, welcome to Vice. This is your new partner, Roy Earl. Take a seat. A special request was made to transfer you to add vice. We need a man with your kind of starch on this desk, son. 
We have two dead Negroes found in an apartment this morning on Yucca Street. Number 6358, apartment 5. We got better things to be doing than wasting our time on two dead junkies. Did I ask your opinion, detective? Two men dead on U.S. Army issue morphine. That makes it an advice case. Beat it. Yes, sir. You and the lieutenant have some history? You could say that. We used to be partners. So, you're working with the big boys now, Cole? I guess so, Roy. I thought homicide was the primo assignment. That may be the case. I asked for you personally, Phelps. I had to pull a few strings to get you over to advice. How does it feel? The lieutenant seems to think I'm doing okay. Okay? <laughs> Don't get humble on me, Phelps. You're doing great. You're the department pinup boy. War hero and crime fighter. What a combination. I can assure you I'm no war hero detective. Nice car, Roy. Is it department issue? No, this is my sled. You can't be seen slumming it in a Nash if you're in vice call. Meanwhile, we got needle freaks kissing it goodbye all over Central Avenue. Carruthers. Phelps? I've been reassigned to advice. What have we got? Two stiffs, overdosed, been dead a couple of days. Government issue morphine? We use the same surettes in Okinawa. Fucking Negro junkies can't take supply this pure. You know these guys? I know of them. The younger one's a two-bit horn player by the name of Cornell Tyree. The other one works in distribution. Started using a little too much of his own product and Jack D took exception. He wasn't born that ugly. His name's Lamont. Tyrone Lamont. So who's supplying the drugs? That's easy. Whoever knocked off the wharves in San Pedro. Jack Dragna, Mickey Cohen. Dope's been all upside down ever since Jimmy Utley started the long walk at Quentin. You talk about it like it's a system. It was a system. But those days are long gone. We are supposed to uphold the law. Yeah, and we do. But we can't change people. The truth is, everyone wants the license to get a little dirty now and then. Our job is to keep it manageable. That's how you see it? See it any other way, and you better forget about being a vice cop. Can we get on with this today, preferably? The emperor across the street appears to shift a lot of popcorn. Let's shake him down. Help you? Detectives Phelps and Earl, LAPD. We're inquiring into the deaths Hand of... over the popcorn, numbskull, before we kick the door in. <laughs> Get... Eddie, help me out, man. They're trying to kill me. You gotta help me out. What the hell going on here? Morgan! B that you? What's your name? Morgan. Half an answer is no answer to me, asshole. Fleetwood Morgan. Keep an eye on him, Roy, while I take a look around. Keep very still, Fleetwood. Don't give me an excuse to shoot you. We're inquiring about the deaths of two men in an apartment across the street, Fleetwood. We want answers. Of course. I'll do my best, mister. Flipping burgers and strapping jolts of morphine to the bottom of popcorn cups, Fleetwood. Now, I want the truth. Who supplies the drugs? Cat by the name of Armstrong Edwards. All right, brings the stuff around about once a day. I know Armstrong. He's a two-bound, strictly small time. Who's he working for, Fleetwood? We have Jermaine an address Jones. on the strips. We're gonna go down there now and rat you out, Fleetwood. Tell whoever it is that you rolled over and gave them up. No, 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 no. Look, I I've been cooperative, okay? Now you gotta help me some. Fleetwood, I'm gonna speak personally to the judge on your behalf. A name, Fleetwood. Well, he's a, he's a real slick dude. Wears a hat and swings a cane. Goes by the name of Merlin. All right, I ain't got a last name. See you at the station, Fleetwood. But you're gonna help me, right? Of course, kid. You helped us out. And we always like to repay a favor. Can you see that Fleetwood gets a nice cell, Wallace? 
One with a window and a nice fresh pillow. How could I help, detective? I need an address on a Jermaine Jones musical booking agency. Just a moment, detective. Jermaine Jones. The office is listed as 5528 Santa Monica Boulevard. Thank you. I heard you were in the blue room the other night. Shouldn't you have been at home? Tucked in bed with the wife and kids? Where I go is your business. It couldn't have had anything to do with a certain delightful but damaged German girl, could it? I don't know what you're talking about, Roy. Jermaine Jones. Don't bother getting up. Your flunky Fleetwood Morgan just snitched you out. I wasn't planning to. Now, you think you could tell me who the hell you are? LAPD. We'd like to take a look around. The hell you will, motherfucker. You carrying a warrant? No, do we need one? Search the place, Cole. What do you think you're gonna find, policeman? Scott Phantom? Fine radio. Shortwave, AM and FM. My father has a Scott. No wonder this thing is sounding a little muffled, Jermaine. Vernon! Wilt! Get over here! Take these assholes apart. You heard the boss. Is this the best you got? The mugs are dope to the eyeballs. Clean them up quick, boys. I ain't got time for this. Come on, come on. Beat these sons of bitches down. God damn. I don't believe this. Are you too good for anything? Now, Cole, now. Right here, Cole. Finish it. Okay. Sit tight, asshole. Pretend you're at the parlor getting your nails done. Cole, you better search through that stuff in the radio before you brace our friend here. Lamont and Tyree are dead. At a stretch, the DA could have you on felony murder for supplying stolen government... Tyrone and Cornell are dead? Hmm. They're on a slab downtown with the ME examining their last meal. Popcorn washed down with morphine. You offering me a deal. I have a pet judge who hates blacks. He'll give you 50 years for your two buddies. Another 30 for stealing from Uncle Sam. You'll be out by the time you're 110. Imagine the changes you'll see. I get the message. How much is this going to cost me? So we make you for all of it. You're the fall guy from Mickey Cohen. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a colored man. You see any Jew boys running around here? I collect my cut. Lenny the Fink controls the action. Lenny who? Lenny Finkelstein, Mickey's dipshit brother-in-law. Fleetwood Morgan will testify that you and Merlin are expanding out of illegal gambling and into drugs. Okay. So I buy from a cat goes by the name of Merlin Adi. Merlin runs the lottery for the Jew boy. The Fink has a new line in drugs. You squeal me out, I deny ever telling you. Tell us about Adi. Adi's a gambler. Fronts points on football games, fights, the horses, numbers. Chicken crossing the road. Motherfucker will take the Go odds on anything. Go visit removals and tell them that we want a special bookcase or wardrobe to hide our dope in. You're going to be copacetic? And when we tell them their good friend Jermaine sent us and said they could do a nice deal for the LAPD. I could use an act like you two. Those fucks Abbott and Costello are on the slide. Hollywood could use another couple of deeply unfunny white bread humps like you. Very good, Jermaine. You have character. Now cough it up. Ramez is a good friend of Lenny the Fink. You're getting the Take picture? Take them all in. We have a deal, right? We're after the morphine. I'll speak to the DA on your behalf. You have my word. I need an address for Ramez Removals. That's Ramez, R-A-M-E-Z. Just checking. Ramez Removals, corner Sunset and Wilton. Owned by a Jose Victor Ramez. 
How was Hopgood doing, Roy? Who? Marlon Hopgood, your informer. He was my corroborating witness in the Bishop case. Oh, right, Marlon. You're not still sore about that, are you? You made the case without him. He was an accessory to the abuse of the girl, Roy. As long as Hollywood exists, it's gonna be chewing up starry-eyed little girls. Marlon was small time. You caught the big fish. And look how much good it did your career. Detectives Phelps and Earl, LAPD. The name's Marilyn Odie. I run a strictly legitimate bookmaker's detective. So that's not an illegal wire service that your colleagues are running? And the number slips that I've been picking up all morning with this address on them have nothing to do with you? I pay my kick to the WAPs, and they pay their cut to the LAPD. You can't go shaking me down. You're a loudmouth motherfucker, aren't you? Anyone ever tell you the criminals are supposed to keep their mouths shut? Stay where you are while we look around. With this quantity, we're looking at a high-level trafficking charge. I think Ramez's place is our next stop. Thanks for the paper trail, Merlin. Oh, that's quite a win for a dime, Merlin. You better God start talking. Damn it. Get after him, Phelps. All right, all right, relax, motherfucker. You got me. Nice one, Merlin. Too bad you couldn't pull off your vanishing act. Make your joke, smart guy, but don't damage that. That there's a valuable antique. You don't say. Maybe you ought to have a look at this, Cole. Adi has Jose Ramez in his pocket. Ramez must have forgotten his lucky numbers. Would you like to calculate the odds on you going to prison for a very long time, Merlin? I'm not going nowhere. I've paid my contributions, and I'm not getting hustled. Jermaine all. Jones gave you up as his supplier. He says that you're Lenny's sissy, and that you'll do whatever Lenny tells you. Me? That nigga's a dead man. I moved the dope Jose brings me. Jose Ramez, I ran a clean numbers rack until those two motherfuckers went into the dope business. So it has nothing to do with the proceeds of the morphine shipment? It's a gambling debt. The heaps took over the wise service and screwed me. Now I just do what I'm told, run numbers and shift dope. Jose's no different. He just thinks he's a big man that can run up tabs. You're not the guy we want, Merlin, but we're taking you in. Maybe some time in a cell will help you remember something worthwhile. Fuck you, and fuck you. You'll never put a charge on me. Take this bum in. Take the long way around, and don't be gentle with him. You got that? Yes, sir. LAPD, we're here to see Jose Ramez. What's it about? Routine inquiries, sir. Can you tell us where we can find him? You missed him. He was in the delivery truck, just went out. God damn it. Put your hands in the air! Jose Ramez, you're being arrested on suspicion of supplying illegal drugs, resisting arrest, and for malicious damage to LAPD property. Hey. Hold your horses. I supply furniture, not drugs. And that thing back there, that was an accident. Some furniture came loose. That's all. Save it for the DA, Chico. Keep an eye on him. We're going to take a look around inside. What's with the puddle? Where's that trail of water coming from, Cole? There must be a way through the back. Welcome to Furniture Village, where taste cometh to die. What a pile of junk. My mother would be in heaven. I bet this is the kind of crap you love, Cole. 20 years out of fashion. 
smells of old people in here. This is useless. I can't see a damn thing. You need to get up onto the floor above. Get down here. There's a cold room in the back. From. You're going to want to see this. There's something frozen inside. Well, I'll be damned. This must be how they transport the morphine. LAPD, leave it right there. Everyone out of the vehicle and put your hands up. There's something in the ice. He's making a run for it. Let him have it. Take them all to Hollywood Station. Have the ME and tech services go over this place. Where will you be? Hunting polar bear. Is Audi serious? Is the LAPD turning a blind eye to narcotics? Keep your shirt on, Phelps. Drugs are prohibited. Doesn't mean people don't want to take them. Limiting supply doesn't mean that we have limited demand. I understand that. I know that the average Joe needs to unwind a little. Let his hair down at the end of the week, but morphine? Heroin? It's important to demonize Hop Phelps. Looks good in the papers. But when all is said and done, it's just another chemical like booze. A lot of people in high places think we're doing the city a favor by keeping the dope rolling into Central Avenue. Donnelly certainly believes we need to keep them anesthetized. Better jobs and opportunities would go a lot further. Will you listen to yourself? The factory is closed. Has been for years. Not much call for ice anymore with all those newfangled refrigerators. Save it for someone who wants to hear it. How many janitors carry a gat? That's one way of announcing we're here. Give it up, Finkelstein. Your brother-in-law will get you a good lawyer. My brother-in-law hates my guts. Come and get me if you want some daylight through that suit of yours. They're all dead, Finkelstein. Leave the weapon and put your hands up now. Put my hands up? Sure. Then what? Cop to peddling the dope? Cut a deal? Ship me off to the queue? Soon as I get locked up, some old friend puts a, an ice pick above my ear? No thanks. Only one other way out, shit heel. Let's have a look around. Now that we've finally got some peace and quiet. I think I've had enough ice for one day until the scotch I pour myself as soon as we get out of here. This stuff has got to be worth at least a hundred grand. So Finkelstein robbed the ship? My guess is Lenny took it off their hands. This is big. This is going to make the papers, Phelps. As senior investigator, I'll do the talking. Well, well, who would have thought that Roy Earl's hand-picked new partner would have turned out to be such a great case man? This is a good result, Phelps. As far as we can tell, Lenny the Fink was moving the morphine across the city and as far north as Frisco. This makes the feds very happy, and it makes Mickey Cohen look bad. I won't lie to you, kid. I like the headlines. I like them a lot. You keep this squad in the papers, and we'll get along just fine.
You know a Freddie Calhoun? Sure, I know Freddie. Freddie needs money to get out of town. Says he's prepared to blow the whistle on a primo reefer distribution ring. Says he Has can... Has he said how much it's going to cost? 50 bucks. And the department will front me the 50? You can put in an expense claim. He's over at Mike Lyman's on Hollywood Boulevard. See what you can find out. 50 bucks? Do they think I'm made of money? No, you just look like you're made of money. Oh, very good. The kid's on form. I'd say on a scale of dull to scintillating, you're a solid tedious today, which you can be pleased with. Do you ever listen to yourself? I don't have the same voices in my head as you do, Cole. Freddy, you're looking good. You're gonna help me, right? That's what I'm here for. You got the money? The 20? Sure, mm. right here. 20? I said... You want the money or the alternative? Tell us about the reefer, Freddy. Who's he? Another good Samaritan. Answer the question. Grass comes from Tijuana. They bring in 50 pounds a week. 50 pounds? Are you hallucinating, Freddy? Get stashed at a house at 1452 North Las Palmas. Names, Freddy. The guy at the house is a spick that goes by the name Juan Garcia Cruz. Well, be careful. He likes guns. That's why I get my money. Do me a favor, Freddy. Spend the money on a bus ticket. You can't last forever on a snitch jacket. Let's go visit this Cruz character. 50 pounds of dope. Crazy. You believe his story? Sure. A hophead like Freddy would raffle his sister for his next score. Be so nice. You guys don't have to leave a mess. What happened? Dope peddler, Juan Cruz. You open fire, and well, the rest of the story tells itself. Doesn't anyone eat regular meals anymore? Junkies feeding on popcorn and grasshoppers living on soup. How could I help, detective? I need an address on a Parnell Soup Company, a head office or factory in the Los Angeles area. Just a second, detective. Only one address listed, 6310 Fountain Avenue. Thank you. These are the guys keeping Juan so well stocked with soup. Ha! Huh. Phelps, you jump like a girl. <laughs> hmm. Now we're getting somewhere. You hungry or something, Phelps? I'd say that's pretty good value for 12 cents. Factory sealed. Someone at the cannery has a lot of explaining to do. Crother says the morphine is still turning up. Makes sense. We have no idea how much of the stuff Lenny shifted. There's been no comeback from Cohen as yet. Maybe Confidential Magazine is right, and Bugsy is on the slide. You read that stuff? I wouldn't say it to his face if I was you. That is one hot-tempered son of a bitch. LAPD, who owns this factory, ma'am? Mr. Parnell. Uh, Howard Parnell. I'll let him know you're here. Please, take a seat. If you don't mind, we'll come with you. If you must. You just wanted a follower, didn't you? You sly dog. 
I must apologize for my partner's roving eye. He hates saying goodbye, but he loves watching them leave. Give it a rest, Roy. If you could show these men in to see Mr. Parnell, Doris. They're from the LAPD. Follow me, gentlemen. What is going on? LAPD, sit tight, fatso. You could be in very serious trouble. There's no reason to be rude. Take a seat, gentlemen. I'm sure we can sort this all out. Maybe you can explain why we found $5 bags of marijuana in sealed Parnell soup cans. That's an outrageous allegation. How do you explain it, Chubby? We found at least 30 cans, all sealed up tight with your label on them. Can I get a list of your employees? Of course. We have nothing to hide. Doris, can you bring me in the current employee listing? Here it is, Mr. Parnell. On the desk, please. Tell me what I want to know, Parnell, or I will have half the LAPD down here tearing this place apart. You're hiding something. Am I right in thinking you would not want to pursue misdemeanors outside your drug case? Depending on what you call a misdemeanor, we might be prepared to turn a blind eye. The truth is I employ a lot of illegals. No one wants to do menial work anymore. Most of my factory staff are wetbacks. The local blacks and Chicanos all want jobs in aircraft factories. Presumably because the pay is... Mr. Up. Parnell, do you know what kind of trouble you're in? Come clean with us. Okay, so things are a little flat. We're deciding whether to lower production. It's taken a while to adjust to not having any military contracts. You know, we sold Uncle Sam five million cans of minestrone. That's funny, Parnell. He has the same address as his brother Juan, who we shot dead less than an hour ago. You better give me something. Look, I'm not involved in this. I'm getting enough grief from Washington. There's an investigation going on into profiteering, like a guy shouldn't be able to turn a buck while the war is on. I'm sure thousands of dead Marines sleep soundly. No, so he's here now? Okay. No, maintenance is at night. Uh, night shift finishes around midnight. He would usually come in around 9 p.m. and have everything ready for the morning shift at 6. We'd like to take a look around the factory floor, Mr. Parnell. I hope we won't have to shut down the line. No, nothing like that. Thank you. I'm grateful for that. I'll show you around myself. I hate seeing how things are made. This is gonna be like that time I went to the slaughterhouse and couldn't eat steak for a week. God. This is where the produce comes in. We peel and sort all of the vegetables and add them to the line in regular quantities. Fascinating. Why don't you keep quiet? You might learn something. Oh, good God. This really is turning into some nightmare school trip flashback. This is the hopper, which boils and purees the vegetables. The other hopper is for the pasta. This way, please. You're loving this, aren't you, Phelps? The soup is ladled automatically into cans. Next stage is labeling. I'd like to see the packing and dispatch area, if you don't mind. Sure. It's over here. Follow me. This is one of our dispatchers. Sergio, right? Yes, sir. These men are from the LAPD. Sergio here records our outgoing deliveries. They all go in the book. Just there on the desk. Can I have a look at that coin? Sure. Why not? Silver dollar, right? Yeah, that's right. The markings on it say it's been taken out of circulation. Maybe. I'm not trying to buy anything with it. I like it. Brings me luck. Sergio, if you don't give me something, I'm going to go to immigration services and have you deported. They get a shipment once every two weeks. Ernesto does the driving. I don't know his full name. It's delivered here at night, or he gets it canned up. From here, it gets sent all over the country. We found a matching silver dollar on Juan Garcia. What are the odds of that, Sergio? Juan and Jorge are in brothers. They're cousins. They work for some evil gabacho. 
The guy is an aberration. He gives out the silver dollars. Or he gets me a list of deliveries every morning. 20th century is always on there. You keep your mouth shut for today, and I don't take you in. Do we have a deal? Do I have a choice? Is that a serious question? That's it for now, Sergio. If we need to speak to you again, we'll put in a call to Mr. Parnell. If you have to, I guess. We will be in touch, Mr. Parnell. It is imperative that things appear as normal here. Keep an eye on Sergio in case he gets tempted to blow the whistle. Thanks. I'll do that. You're going to overlook my little immigration problem, aren't you? Cheer up, fatso. We're going to let you go on squeezing these poor saps a little while longer. Well, until some commie union types infiltrate this place. How many years have you been in Vice, Roy? More years than I want to own up to, Phelps. You have any idea who Rojas was talking about? The gringo runs the operation? Could be anybody. You don't expect those morons to be running the show, do you? If you ask Rojas how much a silver dollar is worth, he'd probably say 50 cents. Sit tight. Let's take a look at what's going on. Either these customers are serious soup lovers, or I think we found our middleman. Car 11 King to KGPL. Car 11 King, go ahead. I'm requesting assistance in a B wagon at 20th Century Markets, 1558 North Highland. Numerous narcotic suspects. Code 2 only, no sirens. 11K, roger. Okay. Cavalry should be here any minute. LAPD, nobody move! I'll take my chances. Whatever you're carrying, hand it over. I'd say he's got about half a can left. I guess that makes me a pessimist. You can't take me in. Take you in? Be glad he didn't shoot you. I wouldn't have chased you. If it was up to me, you'd be talking out of a hole in the back of your I head. I want information. Senor, I would like to help you. But I got a family in Mexico I have to provide for. And my compadres are very unreasonable. Your compadres? Turn out your pockets. I'm trying to imagine you with a I need Ray to run down these silver dollars. I need to make a deal. I need guarantees. You have identification? Sanchez Erto, Mexican, Tijuana address. Here's the deal, Erto. You give me information, and I won't give you to immigration. You have a silver dollar, Erto, just like Juan. I'm sure Ernesto and the rest have them as well. The silver dollars are his mark. Whose? Give me a name. None of us are allowed to see him. His creatures carry his orders to us. If I gave you his name, I would be buried alongside my wife and children. If you don't give us something, you will rot in jail while your family starves on the street. Ernesto Juarez, tonight at 1 a.m. He's bringing the truck into the soup factory. Please help me, sir. Ernesto can be very real cool. funny, wise guy. You want to try saying that again with no teeth? I get a delivery at 7.30 every other day from the factory. Continue. Organizes I was already here. Ernesto knows I'm illegal, so he threatened to report me if I didn't help. And the money is good. The gringos and the gringas, they love the reefer. And I didn't want to have to leave and start again in San Francisco. You're breaking my You're heart. Under arrest, Erto. I'll speak to the DA and see if he will agree to not seize your assets or deport you. That's the best I can do.
Freddy said they were moving 50 pounds a week. That's a lot of soup cans. I think this is an interstate operation. Moving dope around the country to selected grasshoppers. Local weed gets distributed in the usual way, through Pachuco street punks. Someone must know something about this drug baron character. Here they come. Let him unload the goods first. Now? Let's get them. Detectives, found something here you probably want to see. At the very minimum, another 50 pounds. Detectives, I think we got the guy. Does the name Cruz mean something to you? It certainly does. Phelps, Earl, looks like quite a bloodbath. What was this all about? Drugs and money, what else? Speaking of money, where did that roll go? I picked it up for safekeeping. The department owes me 50. Ray, I have another two coins for you. Great. I've got something to show you. It's all set up on the table over here. There. Take a look at these coins you've been collecting. There are letters cut into each coin, along with not legal tender. Those are Morgan silver dollars from the 20s. They were removed from circulation and sent for disposal. A number of smelters around the country had the contract. Look at them together. Can you work out what it says? The first coin, M-A-S. The second, A-N-G. The third, K-A-Y. The fourth, M-E-T. The fifth, A-L-S. Mesanke Metals. A metal foundry. Would you like the address? Would I ever. 1034 Vine Street, Hollywood. We'll finish up here. It's already been a long night, Phelps. See if you can talk them into giving themselves up. I hope that big wad of cash doesn't weigh you down. It's your priority straight, Phelps. We're close to bringing in one of the biggest dope cases of the year and you're worrying about unsubstantial evidence? Locked. We need another way in. LAPD, hands up! Victor Sanders. You know this guy? I should have known. Of course I know Roy. Roy and I have had an arrangement for Get many up. years. You're under arrest. Am I? This we have a mountain of prima facie evidence, as well as the testimony. You'd be surprised how things have a habit of sorting themselves out. Evidence disappearing witnesses that can't be found, policemen that forget. The impossible becomes probable when you have a client list like mine. Shut your mouth! Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Working vice can be a thankless task, Phelps. But on behalf of the brass and the moms and dads and the concerned citizens, I'd like to commend you and your partner for smashing this dope ring. Reefer is almost as big a threat to the children of this city as communism. What about Sanders, Lieutenant? Leave Sanders to me, Phelps. The chief will be looking after that one personally. He will be brought to trial. Phelps, we are celebrating your success. Don't push your luck. Sanders is no longer your problem. You like to fight game, Phelps? I did a little boxing in the Marines. I found it a pretty humbling experience. Fix your sandwich, buddy. Corned beef and egg salad, 12 cents. Bologna and ham and cheese, 10. 
It's strictly a mugs game. You'll like this fight, though. A plucky limey's about to take a beating from an up-and-coming Negro. You sound pretty sure about the result. I ought to be. I got 50 bucks on the black kid. Let's get a ringside seat. Son of a bitch Hammond made a run for his dressing room. Let's find out what's going on. God damn you, Albert! You get out here right now! Step back, LAPD. What's going on? That son of a bitch Hammond has jammed the door. And who are you? Carlo Arcaro. I'm his manager. I'm his trainer. Interesting attitude to have towards a victorious athlete. Victorious? We had an arrangement. We had a goddamn arrangement! That limey bastard was paid to take a nap. He reneged. And you were out of pocket? Damn right. Me and a couple hundred other people. Stand aside. He squeezed out the window. I'll put an APB out on him. Why would we do that? He won the fight fair and square. To prevent him from getting clipped. He was paid to flop. There was big money riding on this So are fight. we here because you lost money or because we're investigating a prize fighting racket? Very funny. Look around and see what you can find. Which is Hammond's locker? Over by the pin board, second from the end. There's a phone number we can run by R and I. Plus a bunch of names and odds. You're not the only one who likes a flutter, Roy. You better find that cocksucker and you bring him to me. I feel bad too, Mickey. He guaranteed me he would take the flop. I guarantee that you will be fish food if you don't bring me. Roy, you out of pocket too? Mickey, seems that way. Don't worry about it. My boys are out looking for him. Well, you'd better call them off. This is a police matter now. If anything happens to Hammond, I'll testify that you made threats against him. Who's the Greyhound? He's a frisky one, isn't he? Cole Phelps. Mickey Cohen. I know who he is, Roy. I, uh, met his brother-in-law. How could I help, Detective? I need an address for the following phone number. AL345. The address for the phone number is... The Hotel El Mar, 6294 Leland Way, Hollywood. Thanks. You know the place? Flop house. Quarter a night, no questions asked. You seem to have a pretty cozy relationship with Cohen and Stampanato. Do I note a hint of reprimand in your tone, detective? Talking to gangsters comes with the turf. You should try out Mickey's place. He's got a haberdasher's up on Sunset. See if he can get you out of those old man's clothes that you slink around in. It's a front for his illegal activities. It is that, but he does carry some very sharp suits. If it's okay with you, I'll stick with Brooks Brothers. Yeah, what do you want? LAPD. We're making inquiries into the whereabouts of an Albert Hammond. No one here by that name. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. This isn't the sort of place where people use their real names. Take a look at the register if you don't believe me. Will you look at this clown? I was married by it. You're a real asshole, you know that? Winston Churchill. A very patriotic Englishman is staying in room 207. The old bulldog. Even at a flop house, Adley can't get out from his shadow. Door's unlocked. Looks like he's had a broad up here. It's still warm. A 
another window exit. Must have just missed him. Instaheat. Adrian Black's product of choice. Seems like a lifetime ago. Candy has expensive taste. Albert has his work cut out for him. Who's Candy? Candy Edwards, the lady who filled out this coupon. All right, let's go after his girl. See if that gets us any closer. So, you boxed in the Marines? We all did. Standard training. I can't imagine you ever played dirty. The only prize for taking a fall was a thousand push-ups. LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Candy Edwards. Apartment 7. You take the outside stairs by the parking lot and turn left at the top. You friends of the Italian guy? Italian guy? Yeah. Sleazy type. Gave his name as Carlo. I didn't like the look of him, but Candy has some funny friends. Thanks. This candy broad must be as sweet as she sounds. <laughs> oh. Like. This isn't gonna end well for you, friend. Out cold, but breathing. Give her a minute and take a look around. Nasty weapon. All the Italians carry them. A real man uses his fists or a gun. Carlo here seems to have the same friends as Hammond. What are the odds on them all being bookmakers? Take a seat, Miss Edwards. We have some questions for you to answer. Look, I haven't done anything wrong. Ever? I find that pretty hard to believe. Can you answer some questions now, Miss Edwards? Sure, I've had worse. I'll show you. How do you think we found you, Candy? You wrote your name and address on a coupon. Look, Albert was supposed to take a fall. We were all supposed to make a little money out of it. But Albert got too goddamn stubborn said his pride was all he had left. So I told him, shove it. Let's see his pride keep him warm at night. So you walked out before the fight? Yes, I did. What's the problem? I didn't take anything. Albert wrote his winnings down on a notepad in the hotel room. We found the odds in his locker. Who has the betting slips? That son of a bitch, Albert. Everyone thought he was dumb, including me. But he beat him all. Albert is going home by boat as soon as he collects his winnings. I know you're going to meet him. Albert is going to collect nothing. He'll be lucky if he can get out of town in one piece. How will you fare any better? They already believe you're in on it. Hell, I know you're in on it. You can think what you want, Buster. I'll take my chances. I got a few errands to run, and then I say adios to this dump. Do you want to press charges against Arcaro? Just get him out of here. That's all I want. Get out, Carlo, you hump. And get rid of that pig sticker. You ever pull that thing on me, I'll shoot you like a dog. That bitch knows where Hammond is. She knows where my money's gone. My money too, tough guy. I'll handle this. Good luck, Miss Edward. I hope things work out for you. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say so. Bad people are looking to hurt Candy, and yet she's not heading straight for the train station? I smell a payoff. I say stake her out, see where she goes. Tail is broad. Don't let her get away, but don't get spotted. I'll bring up the car behind you. Bookmakers? Yes. Surprise, surprise. A blonde woman just came in here. She went out the back way. Said she was being watched. How much did she collect? $3,600. She claimed me out. On the Hammond Kid Galahad fight? You got it. I'm not complaining. We all made a lot of money on that one. 
huge plunge on Galahad, and then Hammond knocks the bum out. So she collected the money and went out through the back door? Nope. She made a phone call over there, wrote something on a notepad, and then left. What are you doing? An old intelligence trick from the Marines. We know where she's headed. Let's get moving. Hammond backed himself to win. And Candy is picking up the winnings. Smart play. Question is, is Candy collecting on Albert's behalf, or is she cheating him too? Car 11K, 11 King. Further to your request, Bumco Fraud has three known bookmakers operating out of storefronts in the Hollywood area. Thrifty Liquor, 6106 Santa Monica, the Examiner Drugstore, and a Max Spirits at 1658 North Cherokee. KGPL clear. Detectives Phelps and Earl, LAPD. Relax, Cole. You just have a blonde in here, Mervyn? Sure did. I'm just about to close up. She took me to the cleaners. 4,000 clams and change. How long ago did she leave? Maybe five minutes. Called the cab. Asked for a number. I told her there was a card over there by the phone. Yellow cab. We need to get after her fast. Can you connect me to the yellow cab company? Hollywood 2187, please. This is Detective Phelps, LAPD. You dispatched a cab to 1487 Ivar Avenue, Hollywood? Yes, sir. Send one round from the pool. Do you have the number of that cab? Number 179. Thanks. We're done playing around. Get Mervyn to give us an address on Ray's place. Do you have any idea who Ray is? Sugar Ray. Not now, Mervyn. Cole doesn't have much of a sense of humor at the best of times. Ray runs a shop up on North Cherokee Avenue, just south of Hollywood Boulevard. This broad's planning on cleaning out every bookmaker in town. Hammond needed to make sure he was getting a bigger payday than if he'd taken the flop. Never trust the limeys, especially where a fight's concerned. A mistake we can't seem to stop making. That's the cab waiting up ahead. She's not in the car. Don't get too close. She must be inside. Pull over. She's heading inside. Call an ambulance. <laughs> he, he said, Just try me, and sit still, Candy. Who me, shot you? Was it Albert? Car. I, I, uh, They're on the way. I have a patrolman searching the depot. The chief's putting together a manhunt for Hammond. He got the money, right? Looks like it. A tough bird, our limey friend using his girlfriend as the bag woman and then getting greedy over the split? He won't make it out of town. That's how you see it? I told you that cocksucker was a crook.
32 caliber, one shot fired. The Egyptian theater. So what now? The theater, I guess. We don't have much else to go on. Poor girl. She didn't deserve that. Poor girl. Half the precinct aren't taking a vacation this year because of her. You need to leave town a lot quicker than that if you decide to screw over Mickey C. This seems like a long shot. Aren't they all? Car 11 King, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King. A message from the coroner. The cause of death was a knife wound. Repeat, a knife wound. The revolver appears to have belonged to the victim. KGB all clear. He stabbed her. <laughs> I thought you said real men use their fists, not guns. That guinea cocksucker. You think he got the money too? Come on, Roy. We're bringing this whole tragedy to its conclusion. Why'd you kill us, Carlos? Your gripe was with me. She was collecting the money for you. Mickey made it clear it was either me or you, and, and I intend to keep on living. She stole those betting slips. She was running out on me. Then you were going to let her? No, I let her collect. I set her up just like she set me up. Just like my manager set me up. Everyone wanted me to take a dive. Everyone wanted me to take the short money. It's for the best, kid. You were washed up, kid. You couldn't climb, and you were too brave to sink. You were going nowhere. Maybe, but I had heart. I was a Royal Marine, Carlo. If I lost a fight, it wasn't for lack of trying, and it wasn't for lack of courage. I didn't have much, but I had that. I did it for you, and that's how you repay me! You did it for yourself. So did little boy. You did it and make a quick buck. And Candy did it and make her dream come true. Blah, blah, blah. I've got the money. All I need to do is get rid of you. It's going to be a shame, kid, but that's business. We've heard enough, Arcaro. Put down your weapon. It's time to come out now, Hammond. Put the gun down, Roy. That son of a bitch owes me a lot of money. Catch. Escania sails from New York, Hammond. Be on the next train and don't ever come back. Why? Because I was a Marine and I once lacked courage. Everyone deserves a second chance. Now beat it. Fuck you! That English prick is getting away with my money, Phelps! Donnelly and the Homicide Squad send their best, Phelps. They're more than pleased that you wrapped up the Edwards killing. They're a little mystified about the motive. You have any ideas on that? Uh, crime of passion, sir. Uh, looks like some sort of love triangle between the manager, the fighter, and the, uh, his girlfriend. No sign of the scrapper? No, sir. Looks like he left town after the fight. Okay. It's Homicide's problem now. Good work, gentlemen. One eighty seven at fifty eight ten Murata Avenue. Homicide wants you over there. The coroner thinks the broad was whacked using the army morphine. Don't say anything, Roy. Just get over there. So I gave him a What's death. with that get up of yours anyway? I should start introducing us as Detective Earl, and this is my science teacher, Mr. Phelps. 
Your interest in my appearance is starting to get me worrying. Like it or not, we're a dysfunctional couple now. People judge me with you on my arm the same way they would a fat broad with a five o'clock shadow. I really hope you're joking, Roy. You seem distracted. We recovered the morphine. Some of it might be unaccounted for, so what? That's life. We did our job. Closing one case opens another. Do you have any idea what is really going on while we're wasting our time following this stuff? Are you going to tell me? The deals being done right now will change the face of L.A. forever, and we're wasting our time on some hump. Someone's little girl. Visit the morgue at the end of the month when the John and Jane Doe's are cremated. Their percentages. The odds for and against lightning striking. Bukowski, you made homicide. That I did. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want a hug? Or can we get on with this? Relax, Rusty. 26 years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. We heard Carruthers thinks... Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills. Falls asleep in the tub. Rest in peace. Case closed. Here, here. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. Phelps? Mal, we've had a look around. Rusty thinks it's a waste of time. What's your theory? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. If the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. Notice anything about our Vic? May I took a look? Be my guest. Take a closer look at her head and neck. Her neck is bruised pretty badly. The eyes are a classic sign of morphine and the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning. And spread a trail of barbiturates. Take a look around outside on your way out and see if you can find the serrets. It would make my theory. The morphine would have been very quick and there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay, so find two guys who recently bought serrets and weren't junkies and you might be onto something. I'm Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson, I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I, who else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox, the things she hid in there. I don't know how she supported herself. Always new clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star, a princess. Does modeling really Who owns the smoking though? jacket? I wouldn't like to tell tales, you understand. That's Mr. Henderson's. An older man, very distinguished looking. He seemed very much in love with her. Where would we find him? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. He said he lives in San Francisco. Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, Thanks, though, Mrs. Reynoldson. It? You've been very helpful. One of the other detectives will take your statement, and then you can go home. Stefan Rusty, we'll take a look around outside and then follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? You think Carruthers has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm a Galloway. 
I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. Bukowski, Galloway, quite the little reunion in there. Almost brought a tear to my eye. They're good police. How would you know? You got promoted so fast, you barely had time to learn their names. Let me fill you in. Bukowski's a pushover. Galloway's a drunk. You could learn a thing or two from both of them. Please. They couldn't work a vice case if their life depended on it. I don't see why they'd be any better or worse at it than me. I noticed you said better. Hubris disguised as humility. Kind of your trademark, don't you think? Why do you always twist everything? Galloway's got nothing to prove. He's been on homicide for years. And he's welcome to it. You're a terrier, Phelps, and that's what I need. Not some old bulldog who can't get up a flight of stairs without coughing up his lunch. LAPD, ma'am. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. The wives weren't happy and neither was I. Did she I. have any close friends here? Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? Lives a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life, a <laughs> wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. Would have cost Henry a fortune. He must really love you. Henry is your beau. Tell us about him. Yes, he is. Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson. That's all he? for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiance to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Well, now, wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, oh no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. Nice move not telling old Sweet Lips in there about her friend taking a big jump till we were half out the door. Very slick. I figured we'd get more out of her that way. You're learning, Phelps. We'll make a vice cop out of you yet. I swear, if we locked up every doctor in this town, Vice would be able to work half days. Yes, sir, your name? LAPD. We'd like to see Dr. Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman is with a patient. Would you like to wait? No, we wouldn't. Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. Your investigation is much more important than my sciatica. I'm just in pain here. Leave me alone. Dr. Stoneman, we are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise doctor-patient privilege. Your prescriptions Dr. contradict you, doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I told her to slow up, but no. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine. It's not illegal, detective. 
A lot of young women in her line of work use it's it for a weight loss. Adrena is addictive, as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. How could I help, detective? Any messages? Yes, detective. The coroner has been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call if you like. Please, thank you. Al? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. Sure thing, Mal. We'll be right over. The old boy is lying. About what? I don't know. He looked relieved when you said she was dead. That's a strange reaction to have to the death of a young patient. Have you noticed how croakers only pull out the physician-patient privilege card when they got some to hide? There are certain things people have a right to keep private. Until it gets in the way of police work. And it's only private when it suits them. A couple of drinks and every doctor I've met will spill your darkest secrets in a heartbeat. Paul, Roy, I have some information for you. You're the only person enjoying this, Mal. Get on with it. The bruising confirms two sets of hands, so we have two killers. Death was caused by heart failure due to an overdose of morphine. Have you dragged us down here to gloat? We already heard your theory. We agree that she was murdered. Yes, of course. I have something else to show you. All right, Mal, what gives? The dead guy's name is Jimmy LeBlanc, career burglar. He came in this morning. Someone stove his head in with a lump of two by four. So what? Good riddance. I found two surrettes in his jacket pocket. Wow. Hang on a minute, Roy. We're listening, Mal. No sign of morphine use and no metabolized morphine in his blood. Scratch marks on his face. Which could be from getting his head remodeled. Time of death, Mal. Maybe an hour or two after the Randall girl. So you're saying Laughing Boy here could be one of our killers? That's a hell of a long shot. Thanks, Mal. We'll check it out. I found something else. Sorry, I don't play. I don't know if it's significant. His wallet was empty. The only other things he was carrying were the harmonica and the morphine. Carruthers. Yeah, he's here. I'll send him over. They have a guy called Henry Arnett in interview two for you next door. Let me know how you get on. Sure, Mal. And thanks for the lead. Sure, Mal. Thanks for the lead. Mr. Arnett, I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. Thanks for coming in. Call me Henry. It's the least I could do. Terrible news about Julia. He's asking whether you banged her in a Chuck on the shoulder fraternity kind of way. I'm engaged to be married. It wouldn't be polite. Answer the question. This will remain private. Heather won't have to know. <sighs> yes. We had That's funny. Julia told her cleaning lady that he lived in San Francisco. OK, you got me. I don't know where he's from. Julia wanted money. She always wanted money. She thought she could get some from this guy. She was wearing a distinctive engagement ring. You think she might have convinced him to buy it for her? Maybe he did, yeah. Maybe he and Julia were getting serious. So you wouldn't have any reason to believe that LeBlanc would be involved in Julia Randall's murder? If this guy is a criminal, he, he might have been involved. But like I said, I've never heard of this LeBlanc. Heather character. told us that you were in fashion. That's right. Goddamn captain's making me resubmit the paperwork. Some kind of traveling salesman? Once I got out of the Corps, I used my... You were in the Marines? Sure. I'm proud of it. The Fighting Sixth. You were in the Sixth Marines? Yes. I was a captain. Which company? Uh, various companies. We had a lot of casualties. Which engagements? Okinawa. A couple of other places. That will be all for now, Henry. You've been very helpful. That son of a bitch was never in the Marines. Why'd you let him off the hook? Because we're giving him a couple of minutes before we start tailing him. Arnett is an amateur. We need to find out who killed the girl. Can you pass this on to Bukowski? Have him check the place out and go through his records. Sure, I'll pass it on. Thanks. Can you also have R and I run the records on a Jimmy LeBlanc and find out who was his last arresting officer? Have him get in touch via KGPL when they have some information.
He's in that car at the lights. He needs money and fast. Get in there and find out what he pawned. I'll stick with him, see how he intends to spend the money. That's right, Mexico City. One-way ticket, please. Next available seat. That would be one day from now. Is that OK? It's going to have to be. LAPD, the man who just came in here, he bought a ticket? Yes, sir, to Mexico City, tomorrow night. If you hear from him again, don't mention this conversation. What have you got? He bought a ticket from Mexico City, tomorrow night. That's good, but this is better. Oh my God, it's Fabergé. Should have seen the look on the pawnbroker's face when I told him to hand it over. The guy who owned the joint thought it was worth at least 10 large for a cigarette case. Arnett only got 600 clams. Car 11K, 11 King, come in. Go ahead, KGPL. 11K, go to Hollywood Station. Homicide detectives Bukowski and Galloway have information relating to the Randall case. Roger, KGPL. 11K, on route. Car 11K, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King, go ahead. RNI reports the last arresting officer for DOA, Jimmy LeBlanc, was Patrolman Fred Wallace, who's working a shift on Hollywood 9th Beat, Sunset Boulevard, between Gordon and Wilcox. Car 11K, on route. A one-way ticket to Mexico. Old Henry's looking as guilty as a dog next to a pile of dog shit. What's his motive? I can think of a few, but I'd put my money south of the belt. One guy plus two dames always equals problems. Come on, let's give him a hand. Right behind you, Wallace, Detective Phelps. Thanks. Outstanding warrant, armed robbery. Knocked over a drugstore back there, and it looks like he brought his whole posse with him. Bad luck for them. They're all yours now. We need some information. Ever heard of a burglar goes by the name of Jimmy LeBlanc? Sure. They nabbed Jimmy on a burglary beef a couple of years back. They cut through a music shop and into a jewelry store. He got four years. I miss his partner, though. His partner? Big guy. I had him cornered, and he picked up this huge display case and threw it out a plate glass window. Then he vaulted out of there like something out of Barnum and Bailey. Got away. I would have had him, except for LeBlanc yelling, run for it, Willie. And you think he was an acrobat of some sort? More like a strong man, a wrestler, or a boxer, that kind of thing. Thanks. You've been a big help. You haven't done too badly yourself. Jet you're suggesting LeBlanc is still working with Willie? A strong man held down Randall while someone administered the morphine. Someone with muscle opened up LeBlanc's skull. Could be. You caught up with Mal. He's given us the dope on LeBlanc. He worked burglaries with a big guy. Goes by the name of Willie. He might be our killer. Can you work boxing gyms, the Y, promoters, that kind of stuff? Since when have you started giving orders, Phelps? And where's the burglary angle? There was no sign of a... That's where our net comes in. Next stop, we speak to Lacey about a list of recent burglaries. The guy's a bum. His office is a front, and he's behind on the rent and his phone bill. And he's skipping town tomorrow. Let's get him in and beat it out of him. Do you want to bring in the killer, Rusty? It could be too smart for your own good, Phelps. We've been talking about that, haven't we, Roy? Stefan? Finbar? 
Sir, I need the contraband list. Items stolen over the last year. Hang on, I'll dig out a copy for you. Here you go. Thanks. Is the cigarette case on there? It's here. Arnett must be out of his mind trying to move this while under a murder cloud. Julia Randall's ring. It's here. Even the engagement ring was purloined. Arnett is a cad. Seems Julia wasn't the first board society girl to hide her bennies in that pillbox. So you and Rusty have been having discussions. Anything you would like to tell me, partner? Phelps, don't be so touchy. Rusty had his best ever clearance rate working with you. Even if the cases he worked on can't be discussed. We were just comparing notes. You're a Boonaroo case man, Phelps. One of the best I've ever seen. Thanks. You gotta learn to take a compliment, Phelps. Nice house. LAPD, ma'am. Is Mrs. Evestrom in? But she is. Would you follow me, sir? I am Mrs. Evestrom. How may I help you? We appear to have recovered some stolen goods that belong to you, ma'am. Yes, of course. That terrible burglary. Would you like something to drink? No, thank you, ma'am. We have some questions, if you don't mind. Why would I mind, young man? if you are returning 43 pieces of my property. Okay, before we get down to that, I'll have a scotch. Thanks, straight up. Maria, can you get the detective a drink, please? We recovered the cigarette case from a pawnbroker. No one knows the real value of an item better than those guys. I inflated its value for the insurance claim. There, are you satisfied? My daughter's boyfriend was quite taken with the case. I think he was even more disappointed than I was when it was stolen. Were you in the house when the burglary took place? Good heavens, no. I was at a social function held by a Dr. Harold Stoneman and his lovely wife. I returned home and all of my things were missing. That's about it for now, Mrs. Eastrom. The department will get in touch and let you know how you can recover your valuables. You have only mentioned a few of the items that have been stolen, Detective. What else has been recovered? You see, Phelps, that's why you get the drinks in early. Hello, Mother. Hello, Detectives. What is going on? We'd like to ask exactly the same question. You have met my daughter? This morning at work. Oh, mother and father divorced. I took my father's name. The detectives recovered some of the things that were stolen, darling. Well, what did you find? A sapphire ring on the corpse of Julia Randall. What are you talking about? Your engagement ring, Miss Swanson. Would you be surprised to know that it was part of the proceeds of a burglary? That's an outrageous allegation. Yes, it is. I suggest we go straight to Henry Arnett's place and sort this mess out. Welcome, sir. Uh, LAPD detectives. We're here to speak to Henry Arnett. Oh, uh, Mr. Arnett? Um, uh, apartment 30. You can take the lift. Thank you. Well, isn't this just nice and awkward?
Looks like he got you good, Phelps. Yeah, he really packs a wallop. Oh, how'd I get back here? Under your own steam, miraculously. You came in through the window, said hello, and then keeled over. How was our net? He's coming around, too. He's all hopped up. Good time to get some answers. You missing something, Henry? You told Heather you're honeymooning without her? Vacheron Constantine. That's an extremely expensive watch, Henry. A graduation present from my parents. Because you pawned a Fabergé cigarette case today for $600. A case that is on a list of stolen items. It was Julia's idea. Get a list of society parties and find out where and when and then have the guests burgled. Julia was desperate for money. No matter how much we made, she always wanted more. Have you told Miss Swanson that you're leaving for Mexico City tomorrow night? That it's a one-way ticket? Henry? Tell me it isn't true. I had no choice. I wanted to marry Heather. I told Julia I wanted out, and she laughed in my face. I had to pay Willie and Jimmy a fortune to do her, and now I'm completely broke. What you are, Buster, is under arrest. Your first burglary was a Dr. Harold Stoneman. Do you want to explain how he is involved, or shall I? Henderson is Stoneman. He was crazy about Julia. She could get him to do whatever she wished. He threw the parties, and we arranged the burglaries. Julia never let him touch her. She just kept him hanging on the promise. Drove the good doctor almost insane. Henry Arnett, you are under arrest for burglary and for the murder of Julia Randall. Henderson is Stoneman, all right? I'm not the guy you want. Go talk to the good doctor. Oh, we will, knucklehead. Meanwhile, we're fitting you for convict stripes. I guess the wedding's off. He only robbed her mother and killed her best friend. Cut the guy some slack. So how does the doctor fit in? That's what we're about to find out. Maybe we should ask him to give you a quick once over. That meathead gave you one hell of a pasting. I've had worse. You should have seen yourself staggering back in there like a drunken sailor. Next time you can take the runner, Roy. I didn't box in the Marines, though, did I? Should have never told you that. Time for the doctor to give us something to make this all better. Hang on a moment, sister. Tell him it's Henry Arnett, and tell him it's urgent. I can't do that. Tell him, or I'll charge you with obstruction of justice. Doctor, I'm afraid Mr. Arnett is here to see you, and he says it's urgent. Send him in. I told you never to come. Tell us the truth, Doctor. I'm so glad you came. Prison will be better than insanity, and I'm already half insane with grief. Do you know that I loved her? I ruined my life for her, and yet I still love her. Will you testify in court that Arnett and Randall did these robberies? They organized the robberies. Julie would get the names of the guests attending my wife's parties. Didn't matter how much money I showered upon her, it was never enough. She never really cared for me. Doctor, I'm afraid you're under arrest. Uh, the practice. You'll call Dr. Gerard. 
no, 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 please don't cry. I want to see no one, not my wife or my children, nor my friends, and I don't want a lawyer. Just lock me up and throw away the key. Didn't see that coming. Putting you through now. I need an ambulance and the coroner immediately to the offices of Dr. Harold Stoneman, 1646 Iver Street, Hollywood. En route, detective. You have a message. Detective Bukowski says the suspect is named Wilson Willie the Wolf Reed, former wrestler. Last known address is an apartment building at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Detective Bukowski says to meet them there. On our way. We have an address for the runner. Let's try and wrap this up then. That old boy really fell for that broad. She was incredibly beautiful. Would you throw it all away for a woman? Life has a way of making you pay for your pride. You're quite the romantic, Phelps. Stick with the percentages. Broken hearts are for chumps. You're talking from experience? I certainly am. Oh, I like women as much as the next guy. As long as they're in their place and doing what they're told. He's around here somewhere, a big guy. Neighbors say he always wears basketball shoes and a cream jacket. And get this, the kids around here say he plays the harmonica. Find the game well and have the commander set up a dragnet. We want the area closed off. We'll take this out of the street. Wilson Reed, LAPD, give yourself up. Hold it. He's got to be around here somewhere. No place to go unless he grew wings. There he is. Waste the son of a bitch. Son of a bitch really picked a spot for it up here, didn't he? Julia Randall's folks are flying in from New York tomorrow to claim the body. I saw her on the slab. So perfect. Looked like she was made of porcelain. She really made an impression on me. Leah had that impact on a lot of men. Christ, it's cold. You guys did good work here today. Roy, I think you should buy your brother officers a drink. Do you now? That's very generous of you, Lieutenant. Earl Phelps. A shooting at the 111 Club, 6232 Hollywood Boulevard. Sounds like a homicide beef. Two of the dead guys caught in the crossfire were carrying army surplus morphine. Get over there before homicide tramples all over the place. We already cleared that up. Judge in Pasadena took the big sleep yesterday. He had a personal stash of 20 cigarettes. Appears we didn't get all of it. Need a drink. I got the jitters again. He plays the saxophone. Oh, and boy. God yes, damn it. Go. You can't seem to put this morphine to sleep. A dead judge. It's not good. Everyone has their vices. Even you, Phelps. Parker and Green are going toe to toe for the top job. There's a change in the wind. About time. This wind will be like a tornado, Phelps. Parker's got a puritanical streak. You never know we'll get swept up in a thing like that. Homicide guys are already inside. Bukowski. Phelps. Back again. We're here about the morphine. Over by the bandstand. You can see what's left of the owner, Eddie McGoldrick. 26, former Marine. 
I know Eddie McGoldrick. He was a non-com in my old unit. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Cole. Waitress said he recently came into some money and bought the club. Who are the other Vicks? Two musicians, Biddleston and Bo. And get this, they used to be in a four-piece, but the trombone player and the drummer OD'd. Don't tell me. Lamont and Tyree? We've met the rest of the band. Now they're a no-piece. <laughs> Do you mind if we take a look around? Be my guest. You might want a word with the hostess, too. I'll keep her company until you're ready. Must have pumped a dozen rounds into him. Certainly sends a message. These look brand new. Never fired. They haven't been degreased yet. We could check on the serial numbers. This guy hunting for bear? Look at these things. They're BARs. You get the odd guy who sneaks one of them home from the war. How did he get three of them? Army surplus morphine, army surplus weapons, army surplus valors. Sound familiar? We should get back to the station and check the details of what exactly was lifted from Ma'am, I'm Detective ship. Phelps, administrative vice squad. Welcome to the 111 Club, Detective. Feels like I've had half the LAPD in here today already. You want to level with me, miss, before we start taking an interest in you? This place has been on the slide for years. Eddie turns up, buys the club, then we start getting visits from tough guys. Next thing you know, we have the St. Valentine's Day massacre. Are you getting the picture? Where do you think he got the money? My guess was that he was selling the sort of quality product that you don't need. Thank you for your help, ma'am. Eddie was in over his head, but he was a decent boss. Take a break, boys. We would like them to stay, Miss Lickman. We're making inquiries into the recent deaths of four musicians. Since when have the police cared about dead black men? Good point. We don't. What we care about is two tons of army surplus morphine showing up on the street. If you care about working in this town, you better give me something on Biddleston and Bo, or their knucklehead buddies Tyree and Lamont. And this is your idea of making inquiries under Stonefura? I've told you a thousand times about speaking that German gibberish at me, Elsa. Roy! How about you get a drink while I see to this? Will you sit down? Why antagonize him, Elsa? You know what he's capable of. Ask your questions, head officer. We have work to do. You can do this the easy way with me, or I can call my partner back over. I can assure you he's a lot less sensitive. You think your threats frighten me? Black man don't supply nothing. You think there's a black man in this town holding on to two tons of morphine? He'd be dead in a minute. White man supplies, black man buys. The only way you're going to get rid of me is to give me an answer. I knew Cornell. We worked together a few years ago. He loved the music, but the music didn't love him. What does that mean? It means that he just wasn't that good. He was a sad, lonely cat. Boys, take five minutes, please. I need to have a private word with the officer. Why do you ask people to risk talking about the subject that could have them jailed? Drugs are against the law, Elsa. And you're so full of courage, you have never felt ashamed. This is getting us nowhere. Do you think you'll win your war against narcotics? It's not my war. It's against the law. My job is to prosecute the laws of this city. Do you think you can stop people from needing drugs, detective? I'm asking the questions here. Then why do you come to me with your stupid questions? You know who controls the drugs in this city. It's not enough to just survive, Elsa. You have to try and make the world a better place. Brave words. Very noble. But... Words are just words, Cole Phelps. She's right. We need to pay a visit to the mixer. Cohen, do you know where to find him? This time of day? You'll find him holding court at the Macambo. He can wait. There's something I need to be sure of. Give me till tomorrow morning. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, partner.
LAPD, we're looking for Mayor Cohen. I believe he has lunch here. There's not going to be any trouble, is there? Which table? Number three, if you'll follow me. Food was Call these grits? LAPD, we have some questions Hi, regarding... Mickey. How's it hanging? Fine. Just fine, Roy. I see you brought Iga Beaver along. Hope he's not going to put the shakes on me again. Paul Phelps, Mickey Cohen. Good afternoon. <laughs> he has manners. Aren't you a little green for this kid? Me, Johnny Stompanato, Cole. He has the biggest schlong in Hollywood and the smallest gun. Or maybe that's the other way around. I can never quite remember. You're a funny guy, Roy. Haven't I always said what a funny guy Roy is? And how much fun it would be to get together with him sometime? Poor Johnny. He's the dark, sensitive type. He's a serviceman, too, Cole. Johnny was at Okinawa. You were in the crotch? Sixth Marines. The lieutenant who won the Silver Star upon Sugarloaf. I've heard of you. Something like that. All right, have we finished flirting? You got something to discuss, Roy? Or are you going to stand around beating the meat while my lunch gets cold? We have some questions. Do I so need I'm supposed lawyer? to believe that you don't know what happened to the rest of the shipment. Lenny, God rest his soul, was a moron. He was family, though, and I haven't made a beef about that, so count yourself lucky, kid. The H is a filthy habit, and I don't condone it. The simple solution would be to have all the dope fiends put down. So you don't know where he got the morphine? Kid, ask a question you might get an answer to. So you haven't heard anything about what happened at the 111 Club? What can I say, kid? I'm shocked that in the land of opportunity, Uncle Sam's finest feel the need to resort to crime. It's a dangerous business. I can attest to that. I'd recommend they get out of the life. A few Quickly. Negroes saying goodbye on the sidewalk will never make the papers, Mickey. But we had a judge in Pasadena say adios the other day. Prominent white people popping their clogs makes everyone nervous. You know dope has never been my thing, Roy. It's always been for schmendricks like uh, Jack D and Jimmy Utley. But uh, I'll ask around and I'll get back to you. Hey, you boys want some lunch? How about a drink? We'll take a rain check on that. Come on, Cole, we're leaving. We have to cut that dope. It looks bad with people dying. We have to get the rest of it. There's no way of watering down the stuff in those little packages. We have to put the squeeze on those guys and get the rest of it. They don't seem to type the fright that easy. We'll see. Hey! What's going on? That fucking rat stoker has gone public about Brenda. Who is Brenda? Brenda is L.A.'s most famous madam. And everyone knows it? Of course everyone knows. Brenda pays her way. Are we cops or a collection agency? Whores have been around since the Bible. Our job is to keep it off the street so Joe Citizen and his wife can stroll around unmolested. Then we should change the law. Are you out of your mind? Every politician in America is against prostitution. Except when they're using them. So where does Stoker come in? He objects to the LAPD and the administration taking its cut. Is everyone in on this? Yeah, and that's the problem. From a little acorn does a large tree grow. He could bring the whole thing crashing down on us. Aren't you supposed to be working the... Sir, do you know which robber detectives are working the army surplus theft from the Coolidge? Caldwell and McManus. I saw Caldwell in the squad room not long ago if you want to speak to him. Thank you, sir. We'll do that. This way. I say we... Harry, you got a minute? Sure, Cole, any time. You been working the docks robbery on the SS Coolridge? Yeah, that's right. So how do you see it? Inside job. Either the guys working the wharves or some of the guys on the ship. What else was taken apart from the morphine? Case of BARs, case of Thompson's, crate of Valor Smokes. Homicide just recovered three BARs and a mountain of cigarettes at a shooting at the 111 Club. No kidding. I better get over there. Do you have a copy of the manifest? Yeah. Here it is. So, how do we connect the docks robbery to the mess at the 111 Club? I don't know who'd be worse. Guy gave his wife a tap. I said, all spare and love and more. Half a million surrettes loose on the streets of L.A. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. This is the crate we recovered. Here's our backroom arsenal from the 111 Club. Enough to arm three companies. So 
Some of these guys are from my old unit. They must have finally shipped home. Kelso, Sheldon. But Goldrick. McGoldrick was on the boat? Sure, we checked him out. McGoldrick bought the 111 Club, Harry. His brains are all over the bar. Looks like whoever stole the dope is getting muscled. By whom? Dragner or Cohen. They control the hop. Detectives, KGPL's going crazy. Shots fired at 1384 North Bronson. Some guy with an automatic spraying a Hollywood bus. They want every car. Go! All units, officers need help at... Bronson, I know that guy, Felix Alvaro. He's one of the guys from the ship? His name was on the manifest. Looks like McGoldrick wasn't the only one to get a message. Hey, Alvaro. Hey, Lieutenant. He's just a plain detective now, Chico. Who's the jughead? This is my partner, Roy Earl. We just want to find out what happened. What happened is that someone took a shot at my bus. And the cops turn up and start treating me like I'm some sort of pachuco punk. My people have been in California for over 300 years. Very fucking admirable, Felix. I was down at the 111 Club this morning, waiting for the medical examiner to scrape Eddie McGoldrick's brains off the bar. You want to tell me anything about that? I heard that Eddie came into some money. Too bad he didn't keep a low profile. It was a tough break to get through Okinawa and then have to Your buy it back home. Your name was in the sniper's notebook. Level with me, Felix. Cohen thinks because we were on the boat, we have the morphine. Courtney's meeting those guys to sort it out. Courtney Sheldon? Yeah. You remember Sheldon, we'll don't you, Cole? You heard that Jack is in L.A.? I saw his name on the manifest. He's been here a couple of months. Sure glad to see you got over your wound, Lieutenant. I mean, Detective. How could I help, Detective? I need an address on a Jack Kelso. Just a second. Jack Kelso, apartment four, 1408 North El Centro Avenue, Hollywood. Thanks for your help. How well did you know the owner? Goldrick? Well enough. He was in my unit. That's some cruel irony. You survive the war, then get blown to pieces back home. It happens more than you'd think. Young guys trying to adjust to normal life, getting mixed up in the wrong crowds. The kid had just bought a nightclub. I'd say he got mixed up in the right crowds. Until someone filled him full of holes. You don't come into that kind of money that quickly without pissing a few people off. Hello, Jack. This is Detective Roy Earl. Hello, Cole. We would like a word. Would you like to come inside? Actually, we'd prefer if you'd come downtown with us. Do you mind? Do I have any choice? No. You don't. Are you going to tell me what this is all about? It would be better for all of us if we discussed it at the station. Bad move, Cole. So, how have you been, Jack? Cut the crap. You pick me up in front of my apartment like a common criminal and then expect small talk? Fuck you.
I'm sure it would be gripping to hear more of your life story, boys, but the truth is, I don't give a fuck. You were on the boat, Kelso. What happened? Do you really think a bunch of Marines could muscle in on the dope rackets in this town? Between the vice squad and the mob, I hear it's pretty sewn up. You'd better watch your and mouth. And you didn't know that some mobsters blew his brains out last night? No, I didn't. I saw Felix Alvaro today. Good. How was he? A little pale. One of Mickey Cohen's goons had emptied about 60 BAR rounds into the bus he was driving. A public bus in the middle of Hollywood. Are you going to tell me what's going on? Or do more innocent people have to die? Yeah, and what's in it for you, Cole? Newspapers? More glory? Another promotion? Another medal at the expense of men who fought for their country? Count me People out. are dying because morphine intended to help servicemen is being used on the street. Now we have guys from our old unit being killed by mobsters. We can put two and two together, Jack. Gratitude isn't a concept that has much effect on you, is it, Cole? Answer the question, Jack. Let's get this over with. I was interviewed when the robbery took place. I don't have anything Jack, further to add. We just want information. Bullshit, Cole. Did you seriously believe that dragging me down here would get me to give up my own guys? Do you call yourself a Marine? Trying to make a name for yourself with this shit heel? Look at this chump with his $200 suit and $2,000 car. The tough guy act is really impressive. I like you, Jack. I'd like to make you for this. I really would. I'm gonna be working on it and keeping an eye on you. You can go now. Shooting Robert Steiner, 6780 West Sunset Boulevard. The victim is a Chris Majewski. Another name from the manifest? Talk about tension. That was like being trapped in an elevator with a married couple who can't decide whether they love each other or hate each other. We go back a long way. You went too easy on him. Next time, you leave it to me. I know how to handle that smug son of a bitch. You don't. Jack will never give up his own men. Just walked up and shot the man. Two of them officers. They went that way. Reinforcements are on the way. Cease and desist. APD file. We have a traitor in our midst. All of the names on the list have a hit team assigned to them. We have to look at damage limitation. We can't allow that strumpet Brent Allen to bring down the whole administration. We've got to put a lid on the press. Can't someone talk to Harry over at the Times? It's too late. The Times would look ridiculous if we dropped the story now. Who is this Stoker? Stoker's a lily white. Nothing that will fix this in the short term. My law and order credentials are disappearing as we speak. Can we get Brenda to leave town? Yes, we can, but she won't go quietly. Brenda has extensive records. Can she at least lay low? That's already been taken care of. Mayor? District Attorney? Who is this guy? And what does he want, Horrell? Name's Roy Earl, detective, administrative vice. Aren't you one of the clowns that got us into this mess? Oh, I think that the orders regarding Brenda come down, not up, Mayor. I have a human interest story. It involves a certain LAPD cop, a hero from the war, who has let his beautiful wife and kids down, who has betrayed America for a German junkie whore, who has abandoned his pledge to the LAPD and his commitment to the public we all serve. It'd be all over the papers by tomorrow, and you would be off the hook. So what do you want in return, Roy? Fingering a fellow officer? They're taking out all the guys from the ship. Why? How does that get them the dope? They obviously don't know who has the morphine, and they're waiting for someone to crack.
Tell Courtney. B bad luck. <coughs> it was worth a try. It was worth a try. Uh. Polar Bear Ice Company. It really did it. Wonder whether it was worth it. Most people never get the chance to be rich. Wouldn't you risk it? Looks like Sheldon is bringing his own fire team with him. Juski, Beckett, Goldrick, Driscoll, these are good guys. Why do they get wrapped up in this thing? This isn't looking good. I feel like the fat kid at the back of a race. You sure it's Cohen making the hits? All fingers point his way. Your buddies are in way over their heads. Being a Marine doesn't mean shit out here. Put out an APB on every one of the sons of bitches on that list. APB on the car 11K. Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King. 11K, go to Hollywood Station. Hey, Courtney Sheldon is at Hollywood Station requesting an interview with Detective Cole Phelps. Well, I'll be damned. That's not correct protocol, 11K. I'll take that as a roger. Car 11 King en route. Roy, in my office, if you please. I'm working a major case. I'm that close, Cap. It's gonna have to wait. Let Phelps do the interrogation. But, Cap... No buts. This is more important. Moving up to 45. You're in interview, Stop too, Phelps. Now. There's a quack in there with him. Sheldon. Is this your attorney? No, detective. This is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. He came down here to help me out. How do you do, sir? You stole the morphine from the Cool Ridge. You can't prove that. Let's see if I can try. And what is your relationship to Sheldon, sir? Tudor mentor. Mr. Sheldon is a medical student of mine. He has a very bright future. Oh, that's nice to know. Too bad all of your war buddies won't get to see We know graduation. about your showdown with Cohen. We found notes on your guys. Cohen is hitting our old unit. He believes we have the morphine. I told him that we don't have it. And that's the truth. Isn't it, Doc? I believe, Mr. Sheldon. I think he's telling the truth today. Beckett had a message for you before he died. Bad luck. It was worth a try. I feel bad about Beckett, Phelps. He was a hard charger. Those guys deserve more. I don't blame them for taking their shot. Have you finished, Detective? I'm just getting started. You have an answer for everything, Courtney. Let's hope Jack does, because now I'm going after him. Is there anyone you're not prepared to sacrifice? Jack is not in this. He's a good guy. You were Jack, Courtney. I don't care who goes to jail. I just want the morphine off the street. What are you offering, Cole? Don't be ridiculous, son. This man is gambling. What's your offer? Doctor! Good to see you. I'm conducting an investigation. Upstairs in my office, now. This man is about to confess. As of now, you're suspended from duty, pending a fitness review. What are you talking about? You heard the man, folks. 
Upstairs and face the music like the hero you were. You certainly had us fooled, Detective. Phelps, you're one of my favorite sons. You've broken this old man's heart. Sir, what is going on here? You're suspended, Phelps. And over your badge and gun. What is going on here? Your wife's attorney has pictures of you and the German. Compromise. I don't understand. How could you do it, lad? Your wife, your children, consorting with the enemy and a dope fiend at that. You're lucky the war is over. You'd be taken out and shot. The department doesn't need this kind of publicity, Phelps. Hand over the gun, keep your head down until your board hearing. I forbid you to make any comments to the press. What the hell were you thinking? Marie, listen, Marie, I need to explain. Please leave, you're upsetting the girls. Let me see them, Marie. They're my daughters. Go to her, Cole. You have done enough damage here. Do you want me to call the police? For God's sake, Marie. Can't we at least talk? What is there to talk about? Do you love her? Do you? What were you thinking? What about our children? Can you imagine what this has been like for them? Go away, Cole. My father has hired an attorney, and you will be hearing from him. I'd like to explain, Marie. I'd like to tell you what I've been going through. What you've been going through. I have had reporters camped out on the front lawn all morning. I can't stand it, Cole. Okay, everyone, keep it down. Cole Phelps joins the arson squad today. <laughs> How'd you like pork in that German whore, Phelps? <laughs> Phelps is up before a review board in December. Until then, he works the arson desk. End of story. Phelps. Yes, sir. I don't care what you did or didn't do, Phelps. I hear you're a good case man. But if you fuck up on my detail, I'll have you out of here before your feet touch the ground. Do we have an understanding? Yes, sir. Cap, we don't want a fucking rat like Phelps. Can it, Tilden? Phelps, I'm partnering you with Herschel Biggs. I don't do partners. You know that, Cap. You do now, Biggs. Social basket cases like you two should get along just fine. Biggs will show you the ropes, Phelps. This is arson. There are no ropes. It shouldn't take long, then. Well, I love the chase till the minute I win it. A beautiful face to learn love for me in it. Give me your heart and baby, I'll bill it. Cause I always kill the things I love. Some Buy me a drink, Cole? No! Not even for old time's sake? Not even for that. 
You're not going to ask me why I'm here? I wouldn't give you the pleasure. We'll get around to it. She's in fine voice this evening. I wonder how the commander would feel Save about... Save threats for someone who cares about them, Roy. You're breaking my heart, Cole. You know how I feel about you. Stay away from Elysian Fields. I should have known that you were playing errand boy. You and your doofus partner. You have been warned. Thanks for your cooperation, officer. I love you. Stay away. You have no idea the type of people that are involved in that company. I have a pretty good idea, Roy. The same kind of people that sent you here. Your investigation is finished. Homicide will be taking over from here. I've heard we've had a spate of grass fires in the hills that you and that hunchback might be able to handle. Thanks for the drink, Cole. You get the message about Monroe? Yeah. Earl delivered it. You? The Kelty. He started making noises about my pension. Sorry about that, Herschel. I didn't mean to drag you into this. Save it, Phelps. Monroe was an asswipe. And so was Earl. And so was McKelty when it's all said and done. I need a word, Courtney. That's okay, Jack. You, you didn't need to come all the way down It's here. important, Courtney. How can I help? Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. What are you talking about? Don't fuck with me, Courtney! Jack, I swear, I don't know what you're talking about. How does your name appear as one of the investors in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? You're out of your mind. I was down at the Hall of Records checking on a property company called Elysian Fields Developments. Their funding comes from the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Seriously, Jack, I have no idea. Your name is there, Courtney with some pretty interesting company. The mayor, the district attorney, some dirty cops, and your buddy, Dr. Harlan Fontaine. Dr. Fontaine? Spill it, Courtney. I want all of it. Fontaine and the rest. Fontaine took the morphine off our hands. Look, Jack, I know you said to get rid of it, but it's okay. I did something good for once. He reinvested the money for us. That's it. That's what's happening. They're building houses for GIs, Jack. I turned a mistake into something beneficial. Something that's going to help out the guys. Courtney, they're building matchstick houses. They're going to burn them for the insurance money. They'll probably stiff the poor bastards for the deposits. Please, Jack, say it isn't so. Harlan's a doctor, a good one. He helps out a lot of people. Looks like he's helping himself, Courtney. You're the fall guy. Who's asking? Leland Monroe. I was wondering when you'd get around to calling. I'd like to meet with you, Mr. Kelso. I bet you would, Mr. Monroe. But I value my skin highly enough to not want to meet with you. Why don't you just send some more of your boys around and we'll have a nice cup of tea? You realize that I could make you a very wealthy man, Mr. Kelso. Better than $220 a month? You're a very witty man, Kelso. I'm going to have to let it slide, Mr. Monroe. Are you haggling with me, Jack? I might be. Come around to my place at 9. 5164 Santa Monica Boulevard. You'll come? I might. Good night, Mr. Monroe. Jack Kelso. That's my opening negotiating position. Ha! Oh, you 
crazy son of a bitch. How did you get in here? I'm bleeding to death. Get me a doctor. I thought I had an invitation, Monroe. Your boys outside were certainly expecting me. That's my second offer. You sadistic bastard. What do you want? I'm going to take a look around, Monroe. Then I want you to tell me what you know about the mayor and those Trojan houses that you're building. That's a hell of a payroll. Dr. Fontaine, I need to speak with you urgently. Sit down, please sit down. Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. It's the fund we are using to channel money into the development of new houses. Why is my name on the board of managers? Technically, you are a major contributor. Please, Courtney. Those houses are a sham, Doctor. They're going to be burned for the insurance. That's a scandalous allegation, Courtney. Do you have any proof? Jack Kelso, an investigator for California Fire and Light, has seen them. He was almost killed when he found out what was going on. I don't know what to say. I feel that I have been duped. Who do you think is behind this subterfuge? Jack says it's a property developer named Monroe. He said it goes all the way to the mayor. You cannot have believed that I was involved. I don't know what to believe anymore, Doctor. I hope that you weren't involved. Thank you for your trust, dear boy. <laughs> Be still, Courtney. All of your troubles are finally over. Oh. Let them go. Let them drift away. It can't be stopped, Kelso. There's too much money at stake. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, Monroe. Ask the Emperor of Japan. Have some fucking mercy! Operator, put me through to Phelps, arson squad. Yeah, Biggs, it's Jack. I'm at Monroe's. He's in a talkative mood. If you get here in a hurry, you might get something before he bleeds to death. <coughs> Elsa. Oh, thank God. Where? Fontaine. Dead? Former patient. So that crazy son of a bitch finally came back for a checkup. It's Monroe. He's raving. You want information, cocksucker. You get me some medical help. I've got to go, Herschel. Monroe's negotiating again. Do you want my final offer, Leland? Tell me how I find the guy who has Elsa. Not Casey. He did whatever Fontaine asked. He had some kind of power over him. He, he, he did all the fires and then a he name went off Monroe. the rails. I don't have a fucking name. He worked as a bug sprayer. Get me a goddamn doctor. Son of a whore! Get me a goddamn doctor! <clears throat> what have you got? Looks like a drug overdose. Get away from him, Phelps. This is my case. Shut your fucking mouth! Since when does a bag man work a case? I knew this creep wasn't on the morphine heist. Victim of his own product. Hey, detective, can we back it off a notch? This is getting out of hand. There's a time to talk and a time to shut up. Now is the time to be quiet, son. Courtney Sheldon was a corpsman, Roy. He served his country. 
He went out with a medical kit and an Army 45 into places that made the Valley of Death look like a picnic. He was either naive enough or dumb enough to get involved in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, along with the mayor, the DA, Monroe, and a certain crooked cop. He was involved in the morphine heist, but he has a puncture wound in his jugular, which makes this a murder case. He was a better man than you'll ever know. You say one more word about him and I will blow your fucking head off! You finally lost it, partner. I have a pretty good idea why Sheldon is dead. And I know about Monroe. Your vast, corrupt future is draining away as we speak. <laughs> I got better things to do than argue the rub with you. Stay with him until the coroner gets here. Make sure technical services bags the evidence. If you let this creep anywhere near it, I'll come looking for you. Yes, sir. You know, Phelps, you're not the worst asshole going around. Thanks, Herschel. Cole, you made it. What's this got to do with me, Rusty? Dr. Fontaine, prominent shrink, dead in his patient's room. Spine snapped like a twig. The suspect is one of his mental patients. I've met Fontaine. His last patient was Elsa Lickman, Cole. She's missing. <laughs> Nurse said that she saw some big Boris Karloff type carry her out of here. The best thing that you can do to help me, Rusty, is let me take a look around. Sure thing, Cole. This way. Peterson, I'm going to need some help. I've got Monroe, Fontaine, and all the others. It's all tied up nicely. It goes all the way to the top. Meet me at the LA River Tunnel entrance just north of the First Street Bridge in half an hour. Don't ask questions. Just be there. This is DA's investigator, Jack Kelso. I have an urgent radio message for Detective Cole Phelps. KGPL. 11K, you see the man. A 207 just occurred on the spillway north of the First Street Bridge. DA's investigator Jack Kelso reports a kidnapping suspect outstanding in the LA River tunnel system with a hostage. 11K, and I'll do that. Three. What the hell is Jack playing at? Like a suicide note. Half the LAPD will be down there hunting for us. We need to get there first. All units on all frequencies stand by. Car 86 Adam is in pursuit of suspect vehicle heading southwest on Sunset Boulevard. Suspect vehicle belonging to Jack Kelso. Described as a Navy Chevrolet Fleet Line. License number 4, William 0286. Car 86 Adam is in pursuit. They picked up his car. I'll need help to make it to the river. That's Kelso's car. Who is this guy? Peterson, assistant DA. What's he doing? He's here, here to cover our backs. I'm going in there, Jack. No one's trying to stop you. I found this at the ranch house. He's marked his routes. I'll go in here. Cole, you take the next entrance. Biggs, I need you to take the car and cover this spot here. I think that's his fail-safe exit. Cole, he's one of ours. What are you talking about? Right where you are! Got it? Got it. Peterson, you want to be DA? We'll earn your salt. So, Kelso is your boy, Peterson? And working with Phelps? A handy lad, that Kelso. Yes, he is, Chief. You can't imagine what those two have uncovered. It could go all the way to the top. I hope you won't be implicated. So, you're the new broom, Peterson? Looks like it. 
And do you think he'll make it out of there alive? I think he might. He's a difficult boy to get rid of. All right, Peterson. I'm listening. What's your offer? Are you okay, princess? I felt better. He saved me from the doctor. Hi, Tex. Do you remember me? I'm not sure that I do. Have you come here to kill her? Why would I do that, soldier? Isn't that why you're all here? I'm here to get her out. Her. But not me. You haven't come for me. No, not you. It ends here. You were with the sixth on Sugarloaf, weren't you? I was. And Naha? Yes, I was. You're Sergeant Jack Kelso, aren't you? Where's your uniform, Sarge? At home in my locker, Hogaboom. War's over, soldier. I know that, Sarge. I'm fighting a different kind of war. I fight for God now. We all fight for God, Ira. In our own ways. Not everyone knows it. Elsa! Are you all right? Get away from her! It's all right, Cole. He doesn't want to hurt her. Ira was with us on Okinawa. What? You know this guy? Don't you remember me, Lieutenant? I remember you. No. I don't. You ordered me to burn that cave, Lieutenant. That cave full of civilians. A hospital. What is he talking about? It was war. For God's sake, I can't be held responsible for everything that happened. I don't blame you, Lieutenant. You helped me to help other people. Ira lost his mind on Okinawa, Princess. And Sheldon asked the doctor to help him get it back. The doctor helped me to find my path. And I helped him to a better life. Elsa's going to leave now, Ira. She will be all right. You've helped her, too. Get her out of here. Biggs will help. His ex is nearby. Jack, I need this guy to make the case. Hasn't this poor bastard given you enough? Get out of here now. For God's sake, Jack. What are you going to do? Don't cry, miss. Sergeant Kelso has come to help ease my way. I was proud to serve with you, Jack. Get out of here, Cole! He killed that man! He was doing him a favor, Elsa. Cole, up here! I'll get this great Hurry, hurry! The water is rising! You're first! Hand her up! Get out of here! You're not good. I'm not arguing! You're wounded, Jack! Let me help! What are you waiting for? Jump, Cole! Jump for it! I... We're gathered here to honor Detective Cole Phelps. Cole Phelps was the best kind of man. Here, here. A war hero who led his men with true valor and through his personal bravery achieved one of his country's highest honors. A cop wrongly accused who never lost his faith in the LAPD and the system. Lord, you belittle his memory. Elsa. Get out of my way, Jack. You call yourself his friend. A detective who fought to expose the evil corruption of the murderous Dr. Fontaine and the rapacious property tycoon Leyland Monroe. Go to her. Will you, Herschel? A reformer. Who You're recognized friend, the need Jack. to remove the odd bad apple from a department right. made up of good men. Herschel, 
A man who never gave up. Yeah, Jack. Who continued I was never to his fight enemy. the good fight. I think you knew that, Jack. The fight that cost him his own life. A good husband. A good father. And may I say, a good friend. Here's your new partner, Stefan Burkowski. I've heard all about you, Phelps. You go easy on me and let me earn the odd citation, and maybe we'll get along fine. I'm here to learn, Detective. <laughs> oh, he's an intense one, isn't he, Mel? It's intense. The newly minted detective here, Cole Phelps. Hi, Phelps. I'll be keeping an eye on you. I could spend a little time basking in reflected glory, make a change from busting hookers and dope fiends. Who was that, Commander? Roy Earl, chief detective and advice. Do they all dress like movie stars? Well, Roy is a movie star. And the whole of the seedy side of L.A. is his audience. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Stick with me, kid. You'll find out. 